It's really important you understand how to put an offer in. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five big tips. Hey, my name's Liam Ryan. I'm one of the co-founders of Assets for Life. And if you're on this channel for the first time, please click the subscribe button uh, and the notification bell. And also give me a quick like, because that will really help me out. And stay tuned for more videos that I release every single week. So in order to get a property deal over the line, you need to put in the offers. And this is what I'm gonna share with you right now. And we're gonna be giving you five big tips. So the first thing that you need to be doing is doing your homework all around your local area. You need to have a good understanding of buying prices, selling prices, rental income, rental prices, refurbishment costs. So it's really important that you know your numbers and also important that you have a good understanding of comparables. What do I mean by a comparable? Well, if you're looking to buy, say, a three bedroom and terrace house in your local area, what you want to look for are other three bedroom and terraced houses that have been sold in that area at some point over the last three, six, nine, 12 months, and ideally within half a mile radius. So you can go and look online, you can go on to Rightmove, and it will show you all of the properties that have recently been sold. You can also uh, get yourself onto land registry and you can download the title deeds. And in some case, you can get the floor plan. So you have a good idea of the layout of the property, what you could do to that property to add value. Research, research, research is really important when you're looking to put an offer forward to the estate agent. So in order to make offers on houses, you need to ETH, earn the honor with estate agents. So get to know the estate agent. You've got to remember the estate agent is acting on behalf of the seller. And it is the estate agent's job to get the best possible price and the more they sell it for, the more commissions they make. Now they will be willing to take below market value offers, but you need to have that relationship with the agent. Um, having that relationship is gonna enable you uh, to have more rapport. You can then ask the right types of questions at the right time. And how do you build the relationships with agents? Well, hey, take them out for coffees, go and have lunches with them. When you get a deal over the line, go and celebrate. Get yourself on lots and lots of viewings. When I first started doing this the right way in 2015, I would spend every Friday in the agents, popping my head in the door, saying hi, and just making them aware that I was a committed, serious, professional property investor. And it wasn't long before I started to get the deals before they went on to right move. All of a sudden, the agent started to know me, like me, and trust me, and I started to get those magical phone calls with the deals that I could then access before they went onto the market. So remember, agents are gonna become your new best friends, treat them with the respect, build that rapport, be professional, go in brand, put the pressure on, but keep showing up. Now, talking about building the relationship with the agent, it is important that they know that you know your numbers well. You know, it's important, have you got uh, a mortgage in principle? Are you dealing with a broker? Uh, maybe the estate agent is wanna, wanna see bank statements to prove that you've got access to the money or your investor's got access to the money. And they're gonna wanna make sure that you have a good understanding of your numbers. So you should be knowing what prices uh, are in the local area, what you can rent the property out for, uh, what you can refurb uh, the property for, what changes you can make to the property. They should, uh, you should know what the return on investment is going to be. So knowing your numbers is absolutely vital because if you wanna buy a property, yes, we wanna make sure that the seller is 
selling it at the right price. We don't want to take advantage of anyone, but you want to make sure that you are buying a strong investment in a good area, and this is going to give you good cash flow, and this is going to be a great investment for your futures. And this is why many people, they come to me and they say, Liam, I need some help in locating my gold mine area. Liam, how do I go and speak to estate agents? Liam, how do I put my offer in? And this is why I run property training all across the UK, where you can come and hang out with me. And like many, many of my graduates now, you can also achieve financial freedom because the more offers you make, the more deals are gonna be accepted and the more property deals you're gonna have in your portfolio. Now, you need to also make sure that you are asking the right questions to the agents. And you might ask questions such as, how long has the property been on the market? Do you know why the vendor is looking to sell? Do you know why it's not sold as of yet? Is the vendor open to offers? Is there anything structurally wrong with the property? Asking the right question to the agent will enable you to get a good understanding of what you could potentially offer for this property. Because if the agent tells you they're highly motivated, maybe they're in some bad debt, maybe they need to downsize, upside, maybe they've got a job overseas, that could be your opportunity to then go in and offer maybe 20, 30% below market value. They sell their property fast, the estate agent gets a nice commission and you get a lovely, juicy, below market value deal in the portfolio. So ask the right questions. Sometimes these are hard questions to ask when you're starting out. And this is why it's important to get on lots of viewings. These questions will become second nature to you. And then once you've done the research, you've done the due diligence, you are now in a position to put in your offer. You wanna make sure that you put the offer in writing. And I would always, always um, put the offer in at an odd number. I wouldn't necessarily go in at 100,000 pounds or 98,000 pounds. I might go say 98,400 pounds, for example. And if your offer is rejected first time round, never be disheartened. Just slowly move the offer up. You never wanna just go back and say, well, hey, I'll meet halfway or I'll add another 5,000 pounds on because that shows that you didn't really think about why you put the initial offer in at that level. So you need to um, have credibility. You need to take your time. You need to be patient. Uh, the agent might say to you, well, look, we've got other people looking at this. You're gonna lose the deal if you don't act fast. You need to know what is the maximum amount that you can offer. And when you go back with a counter offer, just go back with maybe another 500 pounds or 1700 pounds or 2150 pounds. Just creep the offer up slowly where you meet the vendor in a position where they're happy to sell. And as long as that is below the maximum price that you were willing to pay, then go for it. Get that deal in the portfolio, say yes to opportunity, and just get that deal over the line because it's gonna generate your big cash flow and the chances are it's gonna double in value every 10 years depending on where you buy in the property portfolio. Putting in offers are very, it's very exciting and once you've done it once, you'll do it again, you'll get the bug, you'll get the buzz, and you'll just wanna do more and more and more of this. In my first year, I ended up doing 11 property deals and also bought a land, a piece of land, where I was building seven flats and two houses. I raised a million pounds in my first year. You can do this as well. If I can do it, you can do it, but you've got to say yes to opportunity. So if you want to know more about building relationships with agents and raising joint venture finance, click here. And if you want to know more about lease options, then click here. And I'll see you soon. Take care.